you guys can just flag me and say, can you pause for a second? And I can pause down here and then it's not recorded. But otherwise, it's just, you know, there's the lecture and then that PowerPoint slide and I can adjust what you're seeing on the screen when you get the recording later. So that'll be nice for you guys. And I've got my laser. It's important. You know, I always go nuts about the green lasers because they got, if you're a speaker at all, they got a lot of um. So, you know, I can like harass people walking by and say, well, yeah. <laughs> important stuff. So, let's see here. Hiding yet? Did I put that in the right spot? Yes, yes. And, oh, I remember the other. All right, let me, here we are. So um, what we're gonna really jump into is not real chemistry. This is not my favorite thing in the world, but it's very important. And it's actually very useful for you guys. I think, I think this is useful for every citizen scientist on this planet, okay? And that is how you actually do conversions, okay? It's not like literally, well, I, I think I can convert if I know there's 2.5, four centimeters in an inch or whatever. I could probably do that, that's, that's fine. But I'm going to work on a way that we use that that way you don't get it wrong. And so that's super important when you start talking about, you know, hey, administer this many cc's to the patient. You got to know what you're doing, right? And then if you're like, well, wait, this is an ounce. I got to get between this and that. You got you got to be right. This is not oh, it's not an okay time to be wrong on that, right? So when I'm in your chair later, and like, I'm like, oh, sorry, no, oh, hey, hi, hi, hi. You know, whatever. I don't want you to be wrong at that moment that you're putting something in my mouth. Okay, so we're going to work on that piece. Um, a lot of people have different levels of their familiarity with the metric system. Some of us, that's all we know, right? We're raised in that. Others, we, we're, it's not as common to us, right? So we, we got to make sure we understand what that's all about. Um, there's some things we're going to talk about today that are... Um, hi, how are you? So... Um, then the last but not least thing is, you know, and I added this actually last night because I, I forget that I don't always talk about temperature conversion. It's the weirdest conversion there is, actually. And it'll mess you up in science. Like my Chem 2 students, they're, they're, they're the ones that like, you got to be careful about temperature. Because of how temperature conversions were derived, they're not as easy as everything else. Everything else is multiple, it's just moving decimals almost. Super easy. Temperature involves addition and multiplication division. So that's what throws it off. Mathematically. Okay, it's kind of that business she learned a long time ago, order of operations that kind of runs the show. Throwing in addition into a conversion makes it harder. So you just do those independently. The good thing about it is any temperature conversion formula will be given to you. I just want you to be familiar to each one. So that's all we're going to do. So uh, let's kind of talk about the big picture. Our understanding of matter, what's what we were talking about yesterday, right? It depends on our ability to measure the changes in physical properties associated with physical change or chemical change. And just because, as you know, it's like a mixed blessing because I'm glad I have a full class. It's a big deal in academics. You don't want empty classrooms, right? That just means, oh my gosh, you may not have to go, right? So that's good. But because we got moved over here, I don't always get to show you the fun science stuff. So I'll drag some over. But one of the things we talked about was physical change or chemical change, right? So somebody remind me uh, some of the indicators that there's physical change built or chemical change going. Color, temperature, gas, and then you save the last one. And I didn't even pay you. I didn't even pay you for that because that's the one I'm going to do because that's the weird one. That's the one that people are just like, okay, I hear you, classroom book stuff, but I don't know what you're doing. So I'm going to show you. I'm going to show you a true precipitation reaction. So in the video, I did a simple one that's really safe. But then I do a more dangerous one that's just kind of 
dangerous one. How you guys going? Is that just going to keep on? Then I'll do a little more complicated one that's uh, in its safe, safe enough. But this is just, this is how your drinking water is purified. Right here, basically. And this is how the nature purifies your water. A lot of water has carbonate stay, you know, standard in it. And any time a carbonate hits a metal, it basically falls out of solution. So it's kind of cool. So there's, you can't, this is, okay, it has zinc mixed in water. Okay? And if I dried off the water, the zinc sulfate would come back out. And I could mix the zinc sulfate right back in. Is that a mixture, this whole thing? Or is it really a compound, like it's a zinc water, some new compound? Oh, yeah. Mixture, in this case. And, and why? And then help me walk out by definition. Why is that considered a mixture? You can separate it right back out. You put it in, it doesn't get new properties that you can't take back apart. Does that sound good? Cool. So this is a heterogeneous or homogeneous mixture. No, no. Homo. Homo. Why? It's all, yeah, it looks all the same. There's a, I don't see parts, right? I don't really see parts. A, ho, a heterogeneous mixture is if I put sand in water, you'd still see the sand hanging out in the bottom. And I could kick it up and it looked murky and then it'd settle back down. You go, oh, that's a heterogeneous mixture. Correct? Mm -hmm. All right, cool. Which is kind of cool. Okay, so this is sodium carbonate. All right, sodium carbonate was put in, but uh, basically this is a brother, not much different than baking soda. Baking soda. All right, so I've got some baking soda in essence. It's got an extra hydrogen on it, but. So again, I put the baking soda in, it dissolves in water. If I were to gently dry the water off, I would get the baking soda back out, the sodium carbonate back out. So once again, mixture of compound. Sure. Mixture. In other words, that's what we, we're calling physical change. And of course, that always makes me go, hmm, because I know that chemically there was a little bit of interaction that split the sodium from the carbonate. So we're going to that. That's the that, that's just kind of how we do it. So it's, got, it's considered physical change. Again, homogeneous or heterogeneous? Good. All right. So now, the precipitate. Okay. This is. I'm not doing anything with temperature. I'm not freezing these, right? I'm just mixing them together and see what happens. Everybody, so a solid is now mixed in a liquid. That's a precipitate. And you go, that must have been chemical change, right? And so I'm going to now, this is a, this is a flock, and if you look, I'm going to pass it around. If you look, the water is, can, can come back off of there. So what this does is that when a heavy metal comes through the water, it will and falls out, and then you don't have zinc on the other side. So in your water treatment plant, they do that. It doesn't look like this, by the way, but your, your water's not zinc laden. It's not like heavy zinc. But the, what we do is we take this and then we just capture it in sand filter and just keep the pure water comes on the other side. That makes sense? Okay. Well, is that a good nudge? Should be good enough. If you want to pass it around so you can kind of look at it, that's okay. I think we're okay. I don't want to. It wouldn't, it wouldn't ruin you if you got a little of that on your hand. So we're okay. The other one, I'm not going to pass it around, but it's just more dramatic. Now, this is interesting, though, because that stuff I now made is zinc carbonate. And it bonds chemically, ionic bonds, and it won't break apart. So now when I dry it out, I'm going to have a new white powder I did not have before. Right? So that stuff I made is, is a mixture or a compound? I made a compound. That's a chemical reaction. Make sense? Now, the new zinc carbonate and water, by the way, the new zinc carbonate that I made, this is totally different. This is after the fact, I hand this to you and I say, hey, tell me about that. This is kind of a, 
It's not a very good mixture, but if I mix it up so it looked like it was suspended for a minute, what kind of mixture would you call that? Heterogeneous mixture. It's two spaces that are kind of just mixed, hanging out together. And they're very easy to separate. That's what she said earlier. Like if you can separate them back out, that's a heterogeneous mixture. So I hope I'm, I know this is like, but just that's, that's the whole the main thing. So the question, you know, the way I look at it, if you can kind of get your brain to just kind of focus on this, if the things are hanging out, but you could separate them very simply, that's a mixture, it's a physical interaction, and it's either homogeneous or heterogeneous. Uh, case in point, this is the subtle one like Gatorade, right? You look at it and you go, well, that's a homogeneous mixture. How do I know? Because if I drove off the water, the Gatorade would still be hanging out in there. Right? But that original thing that I did, like this, I'm going to do this again. Here's another precipitate. This one's more dramatic. I like it. This is how you get the lead out. So if you're in Flint, Michigan, you got lead in your water, you could actually just drop salt in there. The table salt and start to drop it out. Same idea. Yeah. I'm going to do it with iodine because it just isn't more dramatic. And you know, I owe you guys for parking me over here. You don't get to see anything fun. So here you go. Got lead nitrate, got potassium iodide. They dissolved in there. If I drove the water off, they'd come right back out. But man, they look like they mix. But, and if I described that mixture, I would say, Homogeneous mixture, right? All the same throughout. But I also know it's not a compound, like I didn't make some new fluid that has its own properties because if I separate it, it's the same thing I put together. Correct? Mm -hmm. This is lead nitrate. So there's lead in there. That's crazy. So that's like the drinking water in Flint there for a while, right? It has some lead in it. And it's pretty close. It probably is a lead sulfate type thing. It's a lead suspended, same idea. So if I want to drop it out, I can mix these. It's fairly dramatic. Right? This one I won't pass because the lead is not so good. If you get it on the main. I mean, it wouldn't kill you immediately, but yeah, you could get lead poison. Which I had in sixth grade. Oh my gosh. I know, that's how I knew I was going to be a chemist. I was poisoning myself with lead early. Like, let's do it. Let's get this over with. There you go. Don't know if. So, now this stuff, if I dry it, like get the water off now, I don't have any of the original white powders I put in there. I now have a yellow powder that iodide that's its own thing. And I would go, oh my God, I made a compound. That was a chemical change. Now, what's the other evidence that there was chemical change? Color. So I had a precipitate and a color. That was a double whammy. And by the way, all these things, and if you had a thermometer on it, they all have a slight temperature change when this happens. Because there was bond breaking, bond forming, so there had to be energy change. So these reactions are either hot or cold. Pretty cool, huh? Did that help? Help a little bit? All right, so that's how you get the lead out. Oh, my parents used to talk about that all the time. Get the lead out. Okay, I'll be a couple of chemists. What? Wait, here, I got that poison. Sad story. I better pause the recording. Sixth grade, I sit by the Dwarf's brand. I thought she was cute, you know. And you had her, you know, in that in those days you have this and your pencils, not like graphite, what you have now. So I'm like being, you know, sixth graders, I impress the women. You're like doing this over the pencil head, like look how close I can get without stabbing myself. And she was going. Right? That that's what they said back then. You're a dwarf. Right? She was thinking in her head, and I thought, oh, cool, right? I jammed that pencil through my hand. Not cool, not a cool move. And then I ended up with lead poisoning and in the hospital. I know! And Dolores didn't come visit me, so there is no great <laughs> end to this story. And it was Christmas time! Oh! oh Lord. I know. Sad. <laughs> Well, there you go. I was glad when the doctors got the lead out. Weird. Yeah, so weirdly, I had a clot. And so it actually was in danger. My blood was like 
we got to surround this thing, but it made a clock. So the little guy, you can't handle it. Or anybody can handle the blood clot. Not wild. Okay, there you go. Here we go. We're going to talk about quantities and units. Um, so, you know, again, don't get, you do need to understand the general idea. I'm just saying, what physical property am I measuring? So if I did the most fundamental of the physics world, you know, like length, how much stuff, mass, and time, you can probably build any measurement you can do. Okay? Like, number of atoms is maybe be something else, but I mean, you can kind of build some sort of measurement. You're like, well, how, how fast is that car going? That's length over time. That's how we measure it. That's a, you understand that's a quantum. That's what we're measuring with speed. Does that make sense? Okay. Uh, associated with that is a unit. So you'll hear a word, and that is tied to a physical property. Like, uh, you know, grams. Oh, you're thinking about mass, how much stuff. You know, liters, right? You're talking about volume, how much three-dimensional space does it occupy? Okay, so we're gonna we're gonna deal with that stuff a little bit today. So, <clears throat> and you see, there's a number associated with this. So we're gonna get ready to do a little math. If you guys have your calculators, you might as well pop them out. We'll do practice with that. For this class, I spend time like really making sure everybody in this room knows how they're using their calculator. Like literally knows how you're using your calculator. So the calculator you own for this class, start bringing it to class. And if you don't have it today, you can turn on your phone and just pull up that calculator. And what you'll want to do for this class is turn it sideways. And I think it, if it's iPhone, it turns into a scientific calculator. It has a little more capability. So that, and if not, that's fine. Don't fret. Just have a calculator near you. And, but in the future, especially this first section up through unit one, bring your calculator to class. Does that sound good? And then we'll practice with it. And then stuff will come up. And there'll be throughout, I don't know how long, I'll, but I'll just, I'll let you, I'll try and remember to let you know, hey, Mitch, make sure you have a calculator, but, you know, it's worth having with you. And then, again, there'll be things come up, and We'll literally every once in a while be like, okay, we're doing, we will do one logarithmic calculation when we get to the acid base business. And at that point, it's going to be like, hey, how do you, how am I doing the logarithmic function? It's like, yeah, okay, that's all. And then your classmate will go, hey, I got the same calculator. And you guys will work together and help each other out. And we'll spend a minute doing that. Because that's actually important. You know, and I know you're disappointed that I'm not like, don't use your calculator, use your brain. Just, you know, I'm more of a guy like, my gosh, when I pay you as a dental hygiene and you have to make a calculation, please pull out your calculator and save me money and don't be sitting around there like pencil and paper. Make sense? Okay, here we go. So here we go. Standard units. Let's just, uh, let's make sure everybody understands this. Um, first off, we're not going to talk about the international system of hard wells. I mean, not the international, sorry. The, you use the term imperial system. You just said, wow, I don't know if I've heard that. But what we use here in English system, right? But it doesn't matter because we don't use those units much inside. Okay? But if you get against those things, like inches, right, or ounces, or like, Pounds, that would be probably more common thing you hear, right? I, I want you to be able to convert back to metric or back and forth if you have to. So I'll, for those conversions, I'll always give them to you. But the techniques we talk about today will show you how to do the conversion properly so you don't make mistakes. All right, so let's just start with this. So length, like in English system, we think feet, right? In the metric system, we think meters, right? And I don't have meter sticks in here because I'm not in my regular space, but think about this long. That's a meter. Okay? You don't like my mark? <laughs> so long, too much. Yeah, I think that's good. That's a meter. Longer. That's a meter stick. Okay, so there's a meter. And then just for your reference, there's one meter and 3.28 feet. That's nothing you have to memorize. I'll always give that to you. Okay? Mass. 
We use the gram, which is about the mass of a paper clip. And sometimes you'll think about, and we'll get to this later, the kilogram, which is a quick adjustment. That's a thousand grams. That's like the size of a pineapple. Okay, volume. Okay, so everybody's okay in length. You probably understand mass. That's how much stuff, right? Um, and we and sometimes in the English so we actually use pounds, but that's actually improper because that's under the influence of gravity. Just like in the metric system, this, I'm a nerd out there, so I'm being really nerdy. But in the metric system, we said if you're talking to make the analogy to a pound, you use a newton. That's a measure of force. It's how much the gravity is sticking me to the ground, right? And if the gravity changed, I would weigh less. So if you want to go on a weight loss program, just go to the moon. Mm -hmm. That's immediately be like, oh, 90 pounds. That's cool. Woohoo! No, I don't care. Anyway. So if you want some, uh, just can anybody tell me what the, there's a gram in the standard international units, right? Can anybody tell me what that same unit would be in the English system? Newtons is pounds. That's a weird one. It's a slug. Oh, yeah. Whoever uses that, I never heard of it. Come on. Oh. We're just nerding out here. That, please don't think that that's on the test. I'm crazy memorizing the test. Okay, volume. Here we go. You need to know there's a standard unit of a liter. Now, this one you need to understand, though. I'm going to show you something early, and I do want you to memorize this. And I do want you to focus on this one for a second. So if I take what's basically a centimeter, and I took a centimeter and I cubed it. So if I could get something that's this wide, you know, this wide, this tall, and this deep, right? I took that little volume, that's a milliliter, right? So we're looking at these, right? These are, what, 250 milliliters, something like that. So if I took it down to a single one of those, that's a centimeter by a centimeter by a centimeter, okay? That's a unit of volume. Okay, just like in the English system, we might say ounces, right? 12 ounces, right? Does that make sense? So now, I just want you to understand, in the metric system, we have a very easy conversion. This is a critical one you know, that jumps off between the single, like not the three-dimensional units and the one-dimensional units like liters and jumps over to the three-dimensional units, like cubic centimeters, and it's right here. There's one milliliter in every one cubic centimeter, and that's exact, 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 which is the beauty of the metric system. So do memorize that. The other thing is, is when you see CCs, because that is common to your field, sometimes you apply CCs of something. Hey, give me so many CCs, what are you saying? You're saying cubic centimeters, you're also saying milliliters. It's the exact same thing. Does that help? So make sure you get that down. That's going to be key. It's a bridge. I call this a bridge. And then, last but not least, we've got temperature. And I've got th three units. I'm going to go into those in detail. I only have two up here, but there's the Kelvin unit, which the scientists use. There's Celsius, which scientists also use. And there's also Fahrenheit that's coming in here that no one in science uses. Okay. This is, I make some notes here, but I'll go back to that later. And then the unit, standard unit of time is the second. All right. And then chemical count. This is beautiful. To be continued. There's something called a mole. It's a count. It's a how many. Do you know what that means when you say a how many? Like a dozen. How many is it? Yeah, that's what I mean. So a chemical count is the same thing. Only the how many is monstrous. It's like a lot. Because chemicals are very little. So to have any of significance, you'd have to gather quite a few. Right? So thank you for that. There you go. Now, aside from fundamental units, there's derived use. Just like I was saying earlier, you know, there's last mass, length, and time, but there are some things that have derivations where they, they smack some together. Okay, so speed. 
how much distance you travel in a unit of time. That's two things put together. Distance per unit time. That's speed. Does that make sense? That's derived. There's density. Grams per cubic centimeter. We will focus on this one a little bit, so let's take a note on that, a little longer one. We're not going to do this from energy or acceleration, none of that. We're going to just, I'm just trying to choose that for an example, but this one we'll focus on a little, because you do need to understand density a little bit, because it's pertinent to stuff that happens. When you mix uh, missimilar densities, the light one floats. So when you see things floating apart from each other, you can sometimes answer questions. You know, or even just you see, you get drinks or whatever, and they're in two separate solutions. You can get, I mean, if something's floating on something, you go, the, the one on top is the light one. That can be important sometimes. That solves problems for people sometimes. Okay? So, and just for example, this is, this is like one I throw out to show you how crazy it gets. Energy is actually in mass distance squared per time squared, just to show you how nuts it gets when you stack them all together. So the, the ghost unit, right? You say, oh, there's so many calories, so many joules, right? We talked about that yes, the last time we were together. That actually has units, if you talked about them. So what we do sometimes when they're all stacked together is get messy. We just go, it gets its own unit assigned. We'll just call it the joule. A joule of energy, it has so much energy content. Okay, it has so much heat in it, right? If I was doing fundamentally what I'm measuring, I'm measuring <coughs> mass length squared per time squared. Crazy. Here, I'll, I'll hold for a second. Again, the main focus here is just the understanding that a derived unit is any of these fundamental units stacked together. That's the important part for you to understand. Sometimes derived units, because they're so complicated, they get their own unit assigned. Like instead of saying kilograms meter squared per second squared, I just say a joule. Does that help? And then the other thing is I will focus on density a little bit more. So it is worth you knowing that density is how much mass is in a given volume. Density is how much mass in a given volume, or mass divided by volume. Mathematically, that you need, need to understand. So a basketball, which is much bigger volume, has less weight than a bowling ball because the bowling ball is more dense, right? And that's going to be pertinent to things, floating or sinking. If I was less dense than air, then I would fly. Would be super cool. <laughs> which is a hot air balloon. Just take the whole thing, make it less dense in the air around it, and it starts flying. Isn't that crazy? Why did they make it less dense in the air around it? They heated up the air in the big tube. So there's less air particles because they're going to mess than the air around it, so that it's less dense. It's just crazy. All right. Hot pockets of air always rising, cold water. So, again, there's my cubic centimeter, because I want you to focus on that. One cubic centimeter equals a mil. I'm just showing you that volume, the length, width, and height thing. Like it can be turned into cubic units. That's volume. How much space it occupies can always be measured kind of like this. How much width, how much depth, how much length, right? But you also have things that are like, okay, again, remember how there's a derived unit? Instead of saying a cubic centimeter, we just say the milliliter. It's just the abbreviation. Or I shouldn't even say abbreviation, because it's a common thing we throw around. All right. Now, I'm going to start into something that, once again, has videotapes around it. This is in a different part because this is generally applicable to everybody and it's not the, like, so people all over the world touch in and use these every once in a while, okay? This is just kind of nuts and bolts science or math for scientists, like just get, you know, no matter what the level, and it's called the General Chemistry Boot Camp with Dr. T. So if you're in Chemistry 1 with me starting, you'll start in the boot camp with me just to make sure everybody does math 
some things, some tricks of math. And these are the videos, and those will be available to you, so I just want to remind you that you can Google that also, which is a different YouTube site, and it just can help you do what we're about to do. So, one problem with any system of measurement is that the sizes of the units often turn out to be inconveniently large or inconveniently small, right? So I understand an inch, and now I'm going to explain to somebody how I'm going to the moon. All of a sudden, that is inconveniently small for the distance I'm about to measure, correct? So it's better if I adjust up to like a mile, and then I start explaining it that way. Now, the other way is, is some things we just talked about atoms, right? They're inconveniently small, and now I'm going to measure the width of an atom, and I'm thinking an inch, and I'm like, there's billions of atoms in the universe, so how do I get adjusted that way? So there's two ways. The numbers themselves can be made smaller or larger by scientific notation, and then they focus at the matter of the matter at hand, okay? And then metric and SI units, the units themselves, can adjust the size of the magnitude, which is super cool. So we've got two little things going on at the same time that we play with in science, is we have a notation that helps you adjust numbers, and you have a prefix system in the metric system that helps you adjust numbers, all right? So we'll talk, start with scientific notation. Everybody get ready, we're going to remind you what this is. So, I've got a large number, 24,000. And I want to just really focus on the two floors, right? Because that's the, that's the measure of pertinence. You understand? Okay. So, what we tend to do, and I'm just going to walk you through kind of the long term how this happens. If I cut off one zero, that would be the same thing as 2,400 times 10, right? 2,400 times 10 is 24,000, right? So I could re-express it that way. Or if I said 240 times 10 times 10, right, I would be in the same place. You get the trend? Every time I move the, so here's the long story short, every time I move the decimal over, that's like multiplying by 10. So if I start from the very beginning and I just, and I can physically do this on what I'm looking at, I can say, oh, if I move the decimal over one, two, three, four times, I could be 2.4 times 10 to the four. Follow? Now, in chemistry, sometimes we just hang out here because it's a lot easier. And I get, you know, the minute I hear 10 to the fourth, I'm thinking, like, oh, that's 10,000. That's the range we're using. So I always am very kind of tied into three zeros, thousands, into the three. Six zeros, that's like most of you guys, bank account, right? So million, right? Just like that. Too soon. Maybe like that kind of situation. That's not funny. Maybe later. All right. Nine zeros, right? It's a billion. Twelve zeros of a trillion, right? Does that make sense? So I can kind of just get the size. So the size, the next, this part quickly gives me size. Then I'll focus on the important detail. All right. So it's really important for things where you're doing very big numbers. Because when I'm, you know, trying to convey to somebody, you know, and I actually, you know, eh, it's, a, it's a zero who hit, right? That, that mistake is a tenfold mistake. You understand? And that's why we don't have that mistake in science, because we keep that number. It's very simple. And I have, ah, it's 10 to the 5. I'm not going to make a big, if I made a mistake here, it's okay. Probably survived that one. 
But when I make mistakes here, it's tenfold mistakes. So that's how we avoid that when we use scientific notation. Okay? Very important. So that's what people tend to do in the field to just avoid mistakes. So get you familiar to using it. Where's the decimal point? How many times did I move it? One, two, three, four, 2.4 times 10 to the 4. Okay? Very good. How are you doing? Yeah. Good. What's your first name? Cassie. Cassie. I'm Dr. T. Nice to meet you. So in this country, we kind of do that, right? And hey, how are you doing? Okay, let me do this again. Hey, Cassie, how are you doing? Dr. T. Nice to meet you. Did, did that feel awkward? Like, nice to meet you. Start doing that to somebody. Hey, hey, nice to meet you. Doesn't that feel awkward? Are you guys okay? What am I doing? <laughs> Don't you wish? No. Um, when you do scientific notation, the, the common thing they do, just like that, it's just like shaking with your right hand, is they usually move the decimal until there's only one digit left on the left. That's, that's just the standard thing. It's not right or wrong, and I have reasons why sometimes I move the decimal less. And that's in the video. We'll talk about that more. But you don't have to move it that way. It's not like you're wrong. It's just the common, like if I shake someone's hand in this country, because other places you don't do that, right? You don't touch each other. That's, that's kind of strange, right? So it's okay. That's fine. Is that Okay. So when we do scientific notation, we'll tend to think about moving it all the way so there's only one integer to the left. So now, what if it's a negative number? First off, you guys, I know you're way away from the screen, but can you help me with decimal moves? Well, I'll do it. You ready? One, three, four, five, six. Good. All right. <laughs> so now I'm going to say... 3.78 times 10 to the 6. That's it. Now, how do I make it negative? Do I put that on a negative 6, or is that on the negative 3.78? Negative 3.78. Perfect. Make sense? Yeah. Um, I was thinking when you have a negative. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Thank you. She's like, I'm about to click the slide and talk about that. And she just like, she just out of the clear blue. She's just like, I'm giving you a drink. Can I give you some ethanol? Are you old enough to drink? Yeah, you are? Okay, good. That's just good. So she, she can show you what that means later, what I just did. And it's not videotape. No. Hey, that was a molecular, <laughs> that was a molecular model of the ethanol molecule. Okay. Good talk. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> <laughs> the dean's got me in the office like, so I heard you're in a crazy class, Dr. T. It's like, oh crap. <laughs> Sorry about that. Okay. By the way, I just went to the nerd convention, and that's the kind of swag we have, so I'm like, dad, no. Anyway, I apologize. I got excited. But yes. Oh, maybe I'm not there yet. Sorry, I'm not there yet. But yes, here's the thing I'm going to answer that question. That's a very important thing. So let's just go backwards. We're still in the positive. You know, we're still not to the negative part of that yet. Sorry, I got excited. <laughs> okay, now we're going to go in reverse. So I've got 912. I got to get 10 to the 4. What do I do? Move four decimal places to the left. Which is that? Which way is the right? Our right as we face the screen. Yeah, I agree. So we do that. And we're going to move how many times? Four. Okay, here we go. One, two. And I'm just repeating them. That's two moves. One, two, three, four. And the number is? 9,200. And again, the four is a 10,000. Right? The three is a thousand. Four is a 10,000. That helps a little when I get the three, three, six, nine, you know? Thousand, million, billion, three. Oh, you ready? Ethanol? There we go. For a small one. <laughs> this is going to be bad. Like all the semester, I'll call her ethanol. Wait, that's not my name. You got to stop. All right. So for a small number, 
Now it's a very small number, right? This is like a tenth, a hundredth, a thousand. That's a, you know, a ten thousand, right? It's a very small number. 0. 0.000056. Very small. Now we're moving the decimal to the right, which is kind of like dividing by 10. Right? Because if I took this number and divided by 10, it would, if I took this original number and divided by 10, so I, this is messed up, that should have been the original number divided by 10. Because anytime we take any number divided by 10, it moves the decimal one time in that other direction. So anyway, if you repeat it, we do that. Now, some people aren't familiar with this math notation. 10 to the minus 1 is the same thing as 1 over 10. 10 to the minus 2 is the same thing as 8. Which is the same thing as, which means I divided by 10 twice. The, the long story short for you, though, is if I'm moving to smaller, I'm now using the negative exponent. So we can just walk our way through and say, I move the decimal. Let's see if I'm right. 1, 2, 3, point five, six, 10 to the minus 3, right? But then her and I just had this conversation like, wait, that's not how you're supposed to do it. You're supposed to have an integer to the left. Right? So I gotta go one more. And that would be if I said 5.6 instead, I should have said 10 to the minus 4. True? If I'm being fair to my notation, which I think pops up next, but I'm just trying to show you what I think. Stuff? By the way, not wrong. They're the same number. Same number. Well, okay with that? Where's the decimal point? How many times did I move it? One, two, three, four. Put it up. For small negative numbers, you can guess. Should we take a shot at this? What do you guys think? I'll let you work on it for a minute. And then when someone's ready, they can come up to the board and help me make a decimal move. And if somebody's not feeling volunteerish, then I'll help you out a little bit. And all I want you to do on the board is just walk up and count decimal moves for the class. And then write the number. Anybody up for that? Oh, thank you. Do you want me to turn off the recording? Yeah. You're, Fine. You're ready to be a YouTube sensation? Of course. Yeah. Yeah. That's my baby. That's your baby. <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah. Just my baby. Now, help the class out because we so want to see the one, two, two three, three, four, five. Thank you. Straightforward. Straightforward. Very straightforward. Appreciate that. You guys feel good about that? And it takes practice, no big deal. So, thank you. Should we try this one? When, any, when, I, when anybody is ready, just read out, I'll be your secretary. Tell me what I should start with. Zero. Uh-oh. Oh, man. Start with zero, okay. One, two, three. <laughs> Where's my decimal city? This here or here? All right. I'm good. And then sometimes they have they write this out of courtesy to highlight the the, the decimal point that gets written. So don't worry about whether you see it either way. And the software. I don't know what software does. I can't remember. It's been a good summer, I guess. 
So what I mean by that is when you're doing the homework, I don't know how they have what they have in there. So don't don't fret. And by the way, if it gives you trouble, just drive the other way. And if you're still having trouble, the Lord will let you know. I'll fix it. Um, there's that. Cool, cool. Just start with my one, two, three. Start the decimal. Start moving it. Left. Boom. How did I do? Good. All right. That's it for that. And this again. So in your head, you're just thinking, oh, by adjusting numbers using scientific notation, I'm I'm able to accommodate size. I'm not making numbers different. I'm just able to accommodate size and express big numbers easily. Okay, so either very small numbers or even very large numbers. Okay, metric system. They do the exact same thing. They move decimals with prefixes. That's the whole secret to it. So now, if I need to move the decimal three times, I can just go from a gram, I can go to a milligram or a kilogram. And I've moved the decimal three times. The prefix moved the decimal. That's the whole beauty of the metric system. And then I get away from this weird little, like, oh, wait, there's, you know, how many um, feet in a yard? You know, that kind of stuff that are just weird numbers. That's three. Or, you know, it's just a lot of conversion with actually precision in them. So it's a very clear thing. And I was, I was around in this country as a youngster in elementary when they tried to literally shift the whole country to metric system, and there was an uprising, they didn't do it. And, and unless you're in science, that's what you do. Like, I don't think in English system at all. Been a scientist too long. So it's just this very awkward thing, and it's caused a lot of problems. I do a lot of building on the side, just remodeling three my own home, so it's just... Fun, weird fun. This summer it seemed weirder than usual because I was like, man, I'm getting tired of this. <laughs> but anyway, you know, that's the kind of thing where you're going back and forth in systems and you're working fractions and stuff. And it's like, oh my gosh, I wish we would have done the metric system. But anyway, here we go. So, if you look, yeah, you have ways to move decimals almost every spot. With a prefix, you, you understand? So if I take the things we did, so give me any one of those. Last, okay, what's the standard unit for that? This is good for you. So repeat or meet? Meet. Okay. So the meter is, you know, better. Yeah. Oh, yeah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> we got the meter. We got the meter stick. Now, I will admit this, and my wife shows me this all the time. I'm bad at estimating size all the time, right? So. Anyway, so I've got a meter, correct? I can adjust it to bigger meters or less meter by just putting a prefix on it. So kilometer is literally a meter, but it's a thousand of it. Millimeter is just a thousandth of a meter. It's just that simple. Okay, so this is all the prefixes that are present. Over time, though, we just get efficient. And we go, well, you know, what are the ones we really use? And that's all I want you to know. Because that's all you'll really ever hear. And it gets really simple when you do that. Oh, still actually used now. Now that when computers make a giga start getting used again, right? So maybe I should bring it back. But I think you're okay with that. I'm not going to hold you to that in this class. Kilo, though, is certainly used. Hecto and Neca, not very often. Centa, Milla, yes, yes in chemistry, but for this class, this is about where the road ends for you guys. So you understand what I'm showing you is that this is all I want you to know. So if you take a standard unit and you want to make it a thousand times bigger, we're going to call it a kilometer. It's a gram. I want a thousand grams. It's a perfect. I have a second, I need a thousand seconds. Kill a second. Not very commonly heard. But that's just the, not, the idea. Right? Now, <clears throat> this, you see this, this is using that kind of smaller notation. 
I think of it in reverse because I don't like to do the negative on it. So I, I think of it this way. The smaller, right? So there were 100 centigrams in a gram. And I don't know, I think I'm about to do that. If not, I'm going to put that in there. So, Ten to the three grams in one kilogram. So see how I've worked on the smaller unit, and that way I don't have to use the negative exponent. I just say, hey, there's a hundred centigrams in every gram. There's a thousand milligrams in a gram, and there's a million micrograms in a gram. And I say that to you guys because you might see microliters and stuff that you dispense. Right? So now we know, oh, a milliliter is also what in a cubic unit? A milliliter is what cubic unit? A centimeter cube. Is that okay? A cc is a milliliter, right? Right? And there are, that's a, right? And if you think about a standard liter, right, there are a million microliters in a liter. So know these conversions. I do them this way, so if you work off this purple side, that'll work for you. And I use the gram as the example, but it could be anything. It could be meters, it could be time, it could be whatever you want. So whatever. So get this one here in purple down. And then we'll start playing with them a little bit. All right. Let's take a break. When you get back at 11 or 11, so the round number to remember, then what we're going to do is, um, I'm assuming that that clock on the computer is right, is it? Yes? Good. Sorry, I just was in San Francisco time, so I had to change everything over. So, so um, back at 11 11, and then what we'll do is we'll dive into this a little bit how to use the conversions. And that'll get you into the ball for what's really needs attention. Are you guys ready? I don't think We're back on track. All right. So I'm going to start. Uh, this is the, probably the kind of the critical part of this. And look, some of you may have had this, may not have had this. So this is really one you want to apply. And I'm going to start using the metric system to plan my model. I'm going to start showing you how to do some different conversions. So this is called factor label, label method, so you can convert between the units. And it doesn't matter what you're converting between, whether it's a metric system from metric to English. Um, and like I said, this is the ticket to how this happens, and we use them all the time in science because it, it tracks um, so you don't make mistakes. When you set up, you can look at your units. If your units work properly, then you made the right conversion. That's the whole secret to this. Okay? So, for example, make sure you understand conversion factors. So now, based on what I just showed you, that a, millil a milliliter means that there's 10 to the 3 milliliters in a liter. That's a conversion factor. Okay? Um, 1 gram, 10 to the 2 centigrams. There's 100 centigrams in a gram. There's uh, a 10 to the 3, 10,000, or I mean 1,000 meters in a kilometer. Right? That's, I'm just showing you some examples. Here's how I'm going to rewrite conversion factors. I'm going to write them as fractions. And this is going to be the secret to how these work. So instead of saying one liter equals 10 to the 3 milliliters, I'm going to write it, there's 10 to the 3 milliliters per liter. That's my point. This is going to be the secret to doing this. Instead of saying, you know, 60 seconds equals a minute, I'll say 60 seconds per, and then I can even, if I want, put one minute below there, but if I just put a minute, I assume I'm at one. Is that okay? Because there are 60 seconds per minute. One is often assumed. Okay. 
This is the not obvious one that everybody needs to memorize because it isn't part of doing prefixing. It's the bridge, the magic bridge that gets from the derived unit to the standard, like the fundamental. You've got to know that little link right there. All right. I got the point, right? You got to know this one. And these will always be given. But just for example, there are 2.54 centimeters in an inch. So when I'm using this factor label method or dimensional analysis, whatever you call it, right? I'll write it as a fraction. 2.54 centimeters per inch. Don't have, to, don't have to memorize these. I'm just trying to give you some of these. Now, this one you might as well memorize too because it's going to come up. This is actually density. And it's a fact that everybody should know that water is unique in that there's one gram in every one milliliter. When they set up the metric system, they based it on water. And so it was really nice because then when you do the density of water, it's one gram per milliliter at its set temperature. And if I change temperatures, anything you guys work in, probably that's going to be true. If you're real nervy and you're doing something, you know, absolute zero or something, it's totally different. All right. Now, if you flip them, they're still true. If there's 10 to 3 milliliters per 1 liter, there's 1 liter per 10 to 3 milliliters. This is still true. Right? Since these are the same, this is like putting 1 over 1. Right? And now I'll say that because, I, and you're like, well, what are you, what are you trying to say? I'm just trying to say, if I did any fraction, that's not always true. I can't just flip them and they mean the same thing. But if the, if the number in essence was one, you know, you wouldn't know. Right? I'm just trying to, kind of a squirmy two. But the fact that I flipped it doesn't change anything. Right? Okay. So, just that thought. All right. Is everybody with me? Just, I'm just building to this. I'm going to use this, this concept. It doesn't matter if I flip them. They're still true. 2.54 centimeters per inch. One inch for 2.54 centimeters. Okay. Now, I'm going to walk through conversions. Okay? We're going to walk through conversions. I'm going to show you how to use the method. And then um, I'm going to be very systematic. So what it's down to is either a one-step conversion, that's a simple one, or there's multi-step conversions, and there's power conversions. Like if I'm converting out of cubic centimeters to something else. Got it? So there's one step. And in this class, we'll do probably two steps at the most. And then there's power conversions. And if you can do those methods, you're good to go. So we'll walk through all three of them. Okay, so how many milliliters in 4.5 meters? All right, so I'm gonna I'm gonna just do this by pin, and then the PowerPoint will just do the exact same thing that I'm about to do with pin. I just think it feels better to you that I'm just doing it by hand, just so you can just see what I'm doing. What do I start with? What do I know? I have 4.5 millimeters. I mean, sorry, 4.5 meters. Thank you. Right? I have 4.5 of those. I would like to know how many millimeters I have. So I'm actually going to the end zone. I'm just going, here's where I'm starting. Here's where I want to end up in terms of units. Does that make sense? So now I, I kind of already pre think in my head the millimeters, if I'm getting familiar with that chart, they're the little guys, right? They're the little bitty guys. So whatever my answer is, it's big. Everybody with me there? Okay, so now what I'm going to do is just unit-wise, whatever I come up with, right? So an idea is this, like, if I have 4 over 4, it always just cancels and goes to 1. If I have 100 over 100, it just cancels and goes to 1. If I have x over x, it really means 1. If I have meters over meters, it really cancels and goes to 1. So what I'm going to do is... That will cancel and go to 1, and I'll be left with the answer I want. See how I'm doing that logic? 
So what I want to do is just think about the fact. How many millimeters are in a meter? Thousand. Thousand. <laughs> That's the math. Multiply by a thousand. We'll put five times a thousand. Again, the keys and your this is maybe new because you haven't memorized the metric conversions yet. So you'll have to get that down first. Then start doing this and you go, oh. When I set it up, I'm going to set it up so that these cancel. Here's what I start with. Here's where I want to end up. So I can kind of have, I know what I'm wanting to end up with for units. I put my, my units in here so I can see them cancel and say that would be proper. Then I put the conversion factor in. That's what I was just saying. These are like conversion factors. And it says, oh, Take this times a thousand, that'll give me the right answer. And then when I back check my work, I know that I've done it right because the units agree. And I didn't divide by a thousand, I multiplied by a thousand to make sure I was doing it correct. Answer is, and if you want, you can go, oh, wait, 4.5 times 10 to the 3, or... You know, if you want, you can actually do it on your calculator or whatever and think about what I'm going to end up doing, right? 4.5 times 10 to the 1, 2, 3. There we go. Easy enough? All right, that's a one-step conversion. But hopefully the most simple that there, there are. What, what am I going to do flagging a one-step conversion early? Like, no, I'm about to do a one-step. Here's how I flag it. I go, oh, that has a prefix. This doesn't. That's a one-step conversion. Anything that goes from, like, one prefix to another prefix is a multi-step. Anything that goes from a prefix to a non-prefix is a single step, and that's how you can always know it's a one-step conversion. So if I say, without even hearing the problem, you know, I'm going to convert from grams to centigrams, you go, oh, that has a prefix, one doesn't, that's a one step. See how that works? All right, so. Do a little bit more. We'll practice. I, I'm setting this up, and then obviously I have to have you guys do this. We can talk about it all day long, but that's not going to help you. I don't know if my oh, my cursor jumps off screen every once in a while. So here's another one we can set up. There are 3.28 feet in a meter. So now, remember I told you if it's feet to meters, I'm going to give you the conversion. So here I can tell you the conversion vector. Convert 14 feet to meters. All right, this will be a chance for you to use the one step. All right? And then I'm going to start moving people to the front. I'm going to have you guys work together. Show me what you think the answer is, like with each other. When you guys are comfortable, somebody come up and present that, okay? And again, what I would like for you to help the class is, here's where I'm starting, here's where I'm ending, here's the conversion factor, here's how it cancels. And I'll help you with all that, but talk to each other for a minute. And then get ready, because I'm going to move around. Hey, can you keep everybody at the table so you guys can do the work? <laughs> All right. So, what's next? Man, I tell you, do you know that sometimes if I test so well? 
So, okay, just letting you know. <laughs> I'm recording and I'm teaching and I'm good stuff. Okay, let's try another one. You ready? Oh no, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this myself because you haven't seen this yet. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna show you this and we'll get it built and then we'll even do a little more practice. You ready? Look at the prefixes. Is one with prefix, one without, or are they both prefix? So this is gonna be a multi-step conversion. So how many kilograms? That's the big gram, right? How many pineapples are in uh, 450 centigrams? It's like 10 paper plates. It's like, oh my gosh, how do I do that conversion? So the idea is, I'm at centigrams. I want to go grams, go from grams to kilograms. That's the idea. So my thought is, once I see this, is I'm going centigrams to grams, and from there I'll go to kilograms. Correct? Going to use the same method. This is kind of the length, you may do three at the most on this class, but this is what we do. And if you get into this in a, you know, trying to figure out the newtons of snow load on the roof, you might have a stack of 10 of these conversions. That's why we learn this in science. Okay? So I'm starting here. Everybody agree this is where I'm starting? I'm finishing up at what? Kilograms. I'm going to give myself lots of room. I'm going to do this a little different. Some people call these train tracks. They like this. So I'm going to use that train track. So you can kind of see them like this. I know I'm going to do a couple. Hey, give yourself plenty of room. You use one, that's fine. You use three, that's fine. Just, you know, put a few in. Okay, centigrams is going to what units? Grams, Grams first. So what should be on the bottom? Okay. Which one? Centigrams, because I got to make it go away, correct? And I want to turn it into not the final answer. I want to get it to grams first, right? Yes. So this will be one of the steps, agreed? Yes. Then the next step will be. Grams. So now I can go from that to grams and from that to kilograms. And the way I did it, the way I made decisions was cancel. Leaving what I want on top, getting rid of the thing on the bottom. Now I just got to put the facts in there. It's not true yet. I mean, how many centigrams are in a gram? 100? How many grams are in a kilogram? What am I doing with my numbers? Dividing. And then how many times am I to, so here's another thing. I'm going to show you two different ways. Get your calculators ready. You can divide by a hundred and then turn around and divide by a thousand. Some people that feels awkward, so you're dividing by a hundred times a thousand. It does the same thing. Crazy looking number. Wait, is that 100 or 600? Thank you. Okay, thank you. It's bad handwriting is what it really is. <laughs> Did not have a six in my head. But it looks like it. Good point. So 450 divided by 100 divided by 1,000. I have different ways I can do that. Every time I see a zero, I move the decimal. That's one way to do it, if you're doing it in your head. But again, I'm not recording that. If you got a calculator, do it. Yes. Oh, yeah. So if I moved by zeros, I could do this. There's two zeros there and three more there. So one, two, one, two, three. It's going to be 0 0.00450. Correct? Not very much, which is true. How many kilo, how many big are in this little bitty 450? Not very much. True, true. Okay. 
So the take homes out of this one are because I see two prefixes, I know there's multiple steps coming. Agreed? Everybody with that? Yes. So if you're going to go from kilograms to centigrams, you would still go kilogram, gram, then centigrams? Okay, so you want to go, so you're, here's a going the other way. Right? Should we do another way real quick? That's fine. So here we go. I love that. Any questions here? Can I get rid of this? Okay. By the way, the slides, when you look at the PowerPoint slides that are running through, I love that you're asking the question. We're going to make one up. How many kilograms are we talking about today? Favorite number, three. I have three kilograms, and I want to turn it into centigrams, correct? All right, just jump in there quickly. Because it's prefix, prefix, I know there's multiple steps. Agreed. I'm going to just set this up if you're train tracking, whatever. It's basically, I'm multiplying by this fraction times that fraction, whatever. Okay? Now, walk me through the first step. I'm sorry, what was your name? Eliana. Eliana. Eliana, help me with the first one. What am I trying to cancel first? I put KG at the bottom. Yep. And I'm going to end up in. My name's here. Is that good? How many grams are in a kilogram? Thousand. I'll put it, I'll just put it in now. And then the, the next step, I I'm not, I, I kind of changed format. I didn't mean to. It's not like do it different. You could have just done the units first and gone back and filled in. But. So I'm now, in, if I want, I can see where I'm at. Oh, I'm in grams. Now I got to get centigrams. What goes on top? Centigrams. And somebody was telling me, I heard it. 100. All right. All make sense? Units are right. The dimensions are right. So I can now say, oh, times that, times that. And your final answer is? Ready? I got to start moving my zeros how many times? Eliana, what are you thinking? Twice, Twice here. Oh. Yeah, so one, two, one, two, three, there we go. Wow. Big. Good. Yeah. There, oh, by the way, just now, you could have written it this way too. Here's what's cool. Watch this. If you watch those videos, I can just show you a little bit more fancy stuff. And we do this in science sometimes so we don't make mistakes doing this business. You can imagine. Missing one of those moves could cause trouble. So really, that's 10 to the 3. That's 10 to the 2. Correct? So the answer is you can just add these powers. Now you're really rocking and rolling. If you work with scientific notation and you start to learn that when you so this is 10 to the 2, this is 10 to the 3, which if you multiply these all together, be 10 to the 5. So anything that I do with the two numbers, I go. So if I'm multiplying these, I drop one order of operations and do that to the exponent. So that's what I'm doing. It's a good trick. Save you some time. It's a lot. Good. We can review that a little bit on the video. If you're looking at the video later, what are you saying? There you go. <laughs> right? What did I do? Ten to the two plus. That's where that came from. Take a minute. Sorry, I'm getting a rush, and I don't always like very good handwriting. Thanks for calling me earlier. I need to do that more. All right, shall we? Let's see what else we got. 
one-step conversion, two-step conversion. What else is there? It's all set up. Oh, I need the power there a little bit. Didn't it? Um, again, it's, this is a this is now using a power unit. So I have uh, there are 3.28 feet in a meter. How many cubic feet are in 895 uh, cubic meters? So basically, I'm talking. This is a volume problem. I have this many cubic meters. I need to turn it to cubic feet. So I'm filling the tank, right? But I gotta get my conversion right. I'm gonna use the exact same principle. I'm not gonna deviate from that. What do I start with? 395.0. True. I'm gonna end up where? Cubed. It's important, right? Which is cubic feet, which is a volume. What am I trying to cancel? Yeah, and the only fact I have is how many feet are in the meter. I, let me ask you that. How's that set up? Whoa, 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 whoa! What just happened? I don't know why I just dropped a whole notch there. Sorry. Does that help? Squared up a little bit. Is this the right way to set that up? To start canceling meters? Yes. No. No. What did I do wrong? Got to flip it, right? Okay, good. So I want that on top. What's wrong with that? Is it, am I done? How many? What does that mean? Meters times a meter times a meter, right? So I can do it how many times? Ah, and that's the secret to doing power units. Whatever the power is, do the conversion that many times. How many feet are in a meter? And there you go. That's a one. What does the mass say? 895 times 3. Sorry. 3.28 times 3.28 equals somebody with a calculator. 31,582. There you go. Yes. Yeah, so yeah, so she's trying to see this. If you wanted to do, and you understood, oh, that's actually 3.28 three times. That kind of means the same thing. So now, in terms of how do I do that on the calculator? Okay, so 8.95 times 3 point, or yeah. 3.28, and then you got a little y to the x key. That's a cubing key right there. Do you have a uh, Do you have a uh, upper key? You don't have a key that looks like this, or do you have a key that looks like this, or none of the above? Yeah, oh, you guys have a carrot. Okay, that's fine. So you got that one. There's your other option. Do you have one? Which one do you have? Carrot? Oh, everybody's like, go for the carrot, Dr. Dean. Okay. 3.95 times 3.28. A lot of calculators out there. Try that. See if it works. Now, if it did it left or right, hmm. 
Thank you. Okay. Somewhere down the road. I All right. We, we know what you meant. I'm sorry. No, no, I'm like, yeah. Thanks for watching. Keep an eye on that. Is everybody clear on this? Now, if your calculator is proper, it will do this. If it isn't a scientific calculator, it will mess this up because it will work it left or right. So if it's not scientific, what you'd have to do is this first, get your answer, then multiply by that. How did it come? Well, how did it come out? Well, yeah, it should be 31, or is it coming out with scientific notation? Um, three, three, okay, go ahead. Yeah, it's just, if that answer plus, I go to decimal. Oh, point. Yeah. We're good. Well, yes, we use round. Yay. Any questions there? Thanks for asking that. Speeding things up. How are we doing? Good. If we're getting there, may not get a practice, but I think we kind of got to the main skills that we need. It is. And so, <clears throat> just so you know, Stuff. Talked about this. That kind of was your question, by the way. I have it set up here. <clears throat> and again, I did that. Somebody points out. Use the carrot key. Same thing. Perfect. Oh, hey, I had it in there. Oh, yeah, better still want to do that. Convert 6.7 cubic centimeters to a milliliter. Now, when I go to units, I'm like, ooh, uh oh, right? Because I got a cubic unit and you know, with a straight volume unit. Except someone just kept flashing at you all day long. But there is a conversion you should know. How many mils are in a cubic centimeter? So what is the answer? Yes. So if you use that conversion, you can use it as a conversion factor. And it will cancel everything properly in one step. So if things get more complicated later, like a two-step conversion, we'll still want to fall on that. All right? We've got a couple of minutes. I'm going to do one more that kind of has a, a little variation of this. Convert. Give me a number. 29. 29. Yeah. It's my age. It's beautiful. Let's <laughs> turn 29 this uh, summer. Actually, I did have a big birthday. It had a zero one or a five. I'm going to play with one. <laughs> Right, I turned five years old. <laughs> uh, how many, um, let's do liters. So, because I'm in cubic centimeters, the only way through is to turn the what kind of units? This may have more steps than I think. Always go to milliliters. Anytime I have a cubic unit, get it to, mil to cubic centimeters, turn it to the milliliters, then turn it back out. Now where am I going? Dangerous. Okay. So how many cubic centimeters are, or how many milliliters are in a cubic centimeter? One. Right? We're going to try and turn it to mils. And then the next step is going to be get rid of the milliliters, correct? Mm -hmm. Leave what on top? Liter. How many milliliters in a liter? Mm -hmm. Thousand. So the answer is 29 divided by 1,000. How's that? Close? Mm -hmm. 
make sense? Okay, now I want you guys to go. Uh, when we get back, I'll, I'll look through these slides, I'll see there's a good practice that I'm going to do with the temperature. So we'll, we'll pick up on the slides next. And then I'll have a couple of these after the video today. Uh, after that, then the video. Email is the only thing that's going on. If you're not working, any questions, you can just email me. And by the way, do not use G2L email. That is a not working thing. So, don't forget this is the way to get old me. If you email me in D2L, I'll see it, I'll return it, I'll say return, and you'll get a go gone. You'll never see it. And I'll be very interested in you with your answer. Okay, so uh, how we doing? No, I don't know. What? What? That's done. I can even think about it like, oh, that's not. Now we're on the computer. One. That's why. Perfect. Yep. 